Welcome to Glossika Intro Series. In this series, we talk about the basics of languages, and in today's video, we will talk about the Spanish language. Alphabet Spanish alphabet consists of 27 letters, and they are quite easy to learn since most of the letters are similar to English alphabet, all except one letter. Let's take a look at some Spanish letters with unique pronunciations. H is always silent in Spanish. Example, Hermana, hola, hora. This letter has an NY sound. Example, mañana, niño, año. The double L letter is pronounced as Y. Example, ella, lluvia, calle, milla. Ellos. CH, same as in English. Mucho. Noche. Double R, thrilled or rolled R. Marrón. Párrafo. Barra. Letter J is pronounced as German Bach or similar to a strong English H sound. Example. Jefe. Viaje, mujer, trabajo. In Spanish, there is no difference between letter B and letter V. For example, bate, vaca, vapor, bebida. When letter G is followed by E or I, it's pronounced as a strong English H sound or German Bach. Imagen, general, elegir, página. In other cases, the letter G is same as a typical English G sound, except that it's fully voiced. Grande, jugar, figura. There are two main differences between Spanish in Spain and the Spanish in Latin America. First, in Spain, the letter Z is pronounced as TH, as an English word thing, but in all other regions is pronounced as S. In Spain, the letter C before E or I is also pronounced as TH, but in all other regions is pronounced as S. For example, Corazón, Corazón, Taza, Taza. Barcelona, Barcelona, Ciudad, Ciudad. The second difference, which is also the key difference, is in the pronouns. We will talk about the pronouns later on in the video. In Spain, the second person plural pronoun, ustedes, is used in formal situations, while vosotros is used in informal situations. While in other regions, the second person plural, ustedes, is used regardless of the level of formality. For the sake of simplicity, in this video we will focus on Latin American Spanish, since we will have one less conjugation to worry about, and after you master the basic conjugations, you can always learn about vosotros later on. Stress syllables All Spanish words have at least one stress syllable. A stress syllable means that one syllable is louder than the rest. There are two easy rules that we can use to know which syllable has a stress, or which syllable is a louder syllable. First rule, if the word ends with a consonant, then the stress is at the end, or the last syllable, except for N and S letter. Example, Animal, comer, vocal, universidad. Second, if a word ends with a vowel, or N, S letter, then the stress syllable is next to the last. Casa, grande, joven. Comes. If a word doesn't follow the two rules, the vowel on the louder syllable will have an accent mark. For example, País. This word ends with an S letter. We learned that if a word ends with a vowel or N S letter, the stress syllable is next to the last. But this one doesn't follow the rules, so it has an accent mark to tell us which syllable is the louder one. 
Another example. Página. This word has three syllables. If it followed the rules, the stress syllable should have been on the next to the last. And the accent marks only appear on the vowels. Another important use of accent marks is to differentiate between words that are pronounced the same but have different meanings. Exercise. See if you can find a stress syllable in these words. Planta. Dibujar. Menudo. Puerta. Hablar. Hablo. Gender. In Spanish, every noun is either masculine or feminine. Nouns that end with O letter are usually masculine, and nouns that end with A letter are usually feminine. For example, Pollo. Carro. Manzana. Casa. Some nouns have both O and A endings. For example, Abuelo, Abuela, Perro, Perra, Chico, Chica. Not every single word that ends with an A letter is feminine. For example, the word Dia, meaning day, ends with an A letter, but is still a masculine word. Another example, Problema. It ends with an A letter, but it's a masculine word. That's why when you learn a new noun, it's a good practice to also learn its definite article. El, la. El is a definite article, the, for masculine nouns. La is a definite article, the, for feminine nouns. So when you learn the word el día, you know that the word día is masculine, because the definite article el is used. And not every noun ends with an A or O letter. That's why the definite article before the noun will help you to remember the gender of the noun. The indefinite articles are un, una, un for masculine, una for feminine. Un carro, una casa. Singular plural. If a noun ends with a vowel, we make it plural by adding s. Libro, libros, plato, platos, bolsa, bolsas. If a noun ends with a consonant, simply add es to make it plural. Ciudad, ciudades, tenedor, tenedores. If a noun ends with a z letter, change the z to c then add es. Lápiz, lápices, actriz, actrices. In English we say the cat, the cats. The definite article the is the same for singular and plural nouns. But in Spanish, if the noun is plural, the definite article should also be plural. El becomes los, la become las. Example. El gato. Los gatos, la casa, las casas. Subject pronouns. These are the subject pronouns in Spanish. Yo, tú, usted, él, ella, nosotros, nosotras, ustedes, ellos, ellas. In order to make some simple sentences, we need to learn the be verb in Spanish. Ser and estar. The verb ser and estar both mean to be, but ser is used for permanent states and estar is used for temporary states. And both verbs are irregular verbs. We will talk about the verbs and verb conjugations later in the video. Soy, eres, es, Somos, son. Estoy, estás, está, estamos, están. Let's take a look at this example. 
Él está aburrido. He is bored. Él es aburrido. He is boring. He is bored is a temporary state. That's why we use the verb estar. He is boring is a permanent state. That's why we use the verb ser. Another example. La manzana está verde. La manzana es verde. In the first sentence, we used estar to mean unripe. It is still green, so it's a temporary state. But the next one, the apple is green, is a color, is a more permanent state. The verb ser is used to talk about nationality, place of origin, occupation, time and dates, and relationships. The verb estar is used to talk about geographic or physical locations, conditions and states like emotions that are temporary, and are used in progressive tenses. We will talk about the progressive tenses later on. Soy de Italia. Ella es mi madre. Él es muy alto. Estoy triste. Estoy en casa. Estoy aprendiendo español. ¿Cómo estás? Infinitives. The infinitive is a pure form of a verb. In English, infinitive verbs start with a to, for example, to run, to jump, to eat. But in Spanish, infinitives are one word and fall into one of three categories. AR verbs, ER verbs, and IR verbs. Example. Tomar. Hablar. Hacer. Poder, sentir, salir. Present tense. Present tense is used to talk about an action that is being done at the very moment, an action that is regularly and habitually being done, and general truths that are not bounded by time. To conjugate the verbs in the present tense, we first need to get the verb stem by simply removing the AR, ER, or IR endings from the infinitive verb. Example Hablo español. Vivo en esta ciudad. Viajamos mucho. Present progressive is used to indicate an action that is being done at the moment. It's very similar to ing in English. Estoy bebiendo. Estás bebiendo. Está bebiendo. Estamos bebiendo. Están bebiendo. Notice the only thing that is changing is a conjugated estar verb. Estoy bebiendo agua ahora. Estoy mirando la televisión. Él está corriendo. Ella está haciendo su tarea. Está lloviendo. Present perfect. Present perfect in Spanish is the same as the English present perfect. And we use the present perfect to talk about something that was true in the past and is still true and to indicate an action that was completed recently. Just like in English, the present perfect in Spanish is formed by combining the verb have plus past participle. This is how we conjugate the verb haber to have in Spanish. E. As. A. Hemos. An. Next, we need the past participle. The past participle for regular verbs is made by adding ADO to the AR verbs and adding IDO to ER and IR verbs. He visitado este lugar antes. Nunca he jugado al tenis. Preterite or simple past tense. 
We use the preterite to talk about an action that was done in the past, often accompanied by words like yesterday, last week, last night. An action that interrupts another action, a general truth that happened and finished in the past. Ayer fui al hospital. José comió tacos la semana pasada. Compré un carro nuevo hace una semana. The imperfect tense. The imperfect is used to talk about something that was happening in the past for a long period of time or for unspecified amount of time. It's very similar to used to in English. It is also used to talk about time, date, and age in the past. When we talk about feelings, conditions, and characteristics in the past, we use the imperfect tense as well. Él tenía solo siete años cuando llegó a México. Yo solía trabajar como profesor. Ellos solían estudiar juntos. Ella entristecía en días lluviosos. Future tense. It describes actions that will take place. So far, we have used the stem to conjugate these tenses. But for the future tense, the entire infinitive is used as a stem. Iré mañana. Ella comprará la casa. No dormiremos esta noche. Mañana comeremos pasta. Él caminará hasta la iglesia. Stem changing verbs. Spanish has three stem changing patterns. The stems undergo a vowel change in the last or only syllable of the word, but the endings are still the same. That's why they're called stem changing verbs. In the present tense, there are three patterns. E to IE. O to UE E to I Notice how the stem doesn't change for the pronoun nosotros. Reflexive verbs Reflexive means both the subject and the object are the same. For example, I wash myself. I is a subject. Wash is a verb and myself is the object. Both the subject and the object are the same. Reflexive pronouns in English are myself, yourself, herself, and so on. For example, one of the very first sentences you learn in Spanish is Me llamo and your name. Me llamo John. In English, it's translated as my name is John. But me llamo is actually a reflexive verb, and it will mean something like I call myself John. Some of these verbs cannot be directly translated in English. Instead, it's better to remember the most common reflexive verbs. Reflexive verbs in infinitive form end with SE. Sentirse, sentarse, bañarse, despertarse, ducharse, levantarse, ponerse. They are conjugated like any other verb. The only difference is we have to use the reflexive pronouns before the verb. And these are the reflexive pronouns in Spanish. Me, te, se, nos, se. Me siento bien. ¿Cómo te sientes? Me levanto temprano. 
ella se pone un abrigo. Nos preocupamos demasiado. The reflexive pronoun is put before the verb, except when it's in infinitive or a command. When it's infinitive, the reflexive pronoun is attached to the end of the verb. Quiero bañarme. Necesito sentarme. Tenemos que levantarnos temprano. Many verbs have both reflexive and ordinary form, but some verbs appear a lot more often in reflexive than in ordinary form, and the meaning of the verb can be different depending on the form. For example, ir means to go, irse, and reflexive form means to go away or to leave. The letter A in Spanish. The letter A has many functions and uses in Spanish. We will shortly talk about three very common uses. As a preposition, meaning to, at, in. For example, Voy a la escuela. Nosotros viajamos a México. ¿Cuándo vuelves a casa? ¿Fuiste al museo ayer? As personal a. We already know what is the direct object. So, in Spanish, if the direct object of a sentence is a human being, or a pet that the speaker has personal feelings for, then we need to put the letter A between the verb and the direct object. For example, Veo mi libro. Book is a direct object of the sentence, but is not a person nor a pet, so we don't need to use the personal A here. Veo a mi madre. I see my mother. My mother is a direct object of the sentence, and it's a human being, so we need to use the personal A between the verb and the direct object. Ayudo a mis padres. Tom ama a su novia. Ella llamó a su amiga. Veo a mi perro. Another important note is, the personal A is used when the direct object is a specific person or someone that can be identified. The personal A is not used when the direct object doesn't refer to anyone specific. For example, I need my friend. Necesito a mi amigo. My friend is a specific person, someone that I know. But I need a friend. Necesito un amigo. The direct object doesn't refer to anyone specific. A friend is not clear. Personal a is also not used with the verb tener and haber, even when the direct object is a person. Tengo dos hermanas. Hay tres personas aquí. Connecting a verb to an infinitive. Another common use of the letter A is to connect a conjugated verb to an infinitive. One of the most common verbs in this form is Voy a dormir ahora. Ella va a visitar a sus hijos. Nosotros vamos a limpiar la casa. Most adjectives in Spanish end with O letter. Rojo, nuevo, cansado, famoso. And also, most adjectives come after the noun they modify or describe. El coche rojo, el hombre alto. Adjectives that end with O letter have four possible endings in total. These adjectives must agree with the noun in gender and number. Take a look at this example again. We know the coche is masculine in Spanish because we use the definite article el. What if we use a feminine noun? La flor roja. We know that flor is feminine because the definite article la is used. But notice how the last letter of the adjective also changed. Las flores rojas. Los coches rojos. As you can see, there are four possible endings for adjectives that end with O letter. Some adjectives end with E letter or a consonant. For these adjectives, there is no difference between masculine and feminine, only for singular and plural, meaning they only have two possible endings. El chico interesante. 
La chica interesante. Los chicos interesantes. Las chicas interesantes. And not all adjectives come after the noun they modify. A small number of adjectives come before the noun they modify. For example, numbers, possessive adjectives, and some more adjectives like And a very few number of adjectives can be placed before and after the noun they modify, and the meaning will change according to the position. Nuevo. Mi nuevo trabajo. Necesito zapatos nuevos. Possessive pronouns. In Spanish, there are short form possessive pronouns and long form possessive pronouns. The gender is the same for some of the short-form possessive adjectives. These pronouns only have singular or plural form. The short-form possessive adjectives are always placed before the noun they modify. But the long-form possessive adjectives are placed after the noun they modify or describe. The possessive pronouns are adjectives, so just like adjectives, they must agree with the noun they modify. Take a look at this example, nuestra abuela. The pronoun nuestra is in feminine form. It doesn't matter if we is a group of males or females, because the possessive pronoun is an adjective and must agree with the noun in gender and in number. And in our example, the noun is a feminine noun. Another example. Our house. Again, we use nuestra because the word casa is a feminine noun. But if the noun is masculine, like the word libro, book, then we use the pronoun nuestro. Direct and indirect object. This is a very easy concept to learn, but quite important in Spanish in order to use the correct pronouns. An object is the thing that is being acted upon by the verb. A direct object answers the question what or who. I see you. You is a direct object. What do I see? You. They help me. Me is a direct object. Who did they help? He writes a book. A book is a direct object. What does he write? So by asking what or who, we can find the direct object of a sentence. These verbs only take one object. For the direct objects, we use the direct object pronouns, and these are the direct object pronouns in Spanish. Lo compro. La amas? La ayudo. Compré un libro. Quiero leerlo. Estos libros nuevos los compré ayer. Estas flores nuevas las compré ayer. Some verbs take two objects, a direct object and an indirect object. For example, the verb send. I send you a book. We can find the direct object by asking what or who. What do you send? A book. So a book is a direct object of the sentence. The you is the indirect object of the sentence. This verb takes two objects. Another example, she gave me a gift. A gift is a direct object. Me is an indirect object. An indirect object answers the question for whom or to whom. I send you a book. To whom do you send the book? You is an indirect object. She gave me a gift. To whom, for whom, me. 
So me is an indirect object. And for the indirect objects, we use the indirect pronouns. These are the indirect pronouns in Spanish. For example, Le compro la mesa. Les hago muchas preguntas. Le could mean he, she, or the formal you. So in order to clarify the pronoun, we can use a él, a ella, or a usted. Some of the most commonly used verbs in Spanish are irregular verbs. So it's very important to learn and remember the irregular verbs in order to conjugate them correctly. You don't have to memorize every single irregular verb in Spanish. You can start by memorizing the most common irregular verbs. Here's a list for some of the most commonly used irregular verbs in Spanish. Ser, estar, poder, tener, hacer, ver, decir, ir, dar, saber, leer, volver, dormir, querer, salir. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to Oglosica channel to see more videos like this one. And let us know in the comment section what language do you want to see next.